Well, hey guys, welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods, the place where we pair lightly repackaged internet memes with camping, backpacking, and overlanding advice and pretend that it's original or insightful content. In this video, we're going to take a look at the air manifold that is the nerve center of my poor man's land cruiser's onboard air system. Adding a manifold to your onboard air system allows you to expand and customize your system to your heart's content. With my manifold, I can quickly connect air hoses, monitor air pressure, and control the compressor all from the front of the engine bay without having to lean over a dirty fender or hot engine. It's essentially a place for me to add all the air-powered crap that I think I might need on the trail one day, but will probably never even use. Stick around to see how much time I wasted building this cheap onboard air system for the poor man's Land Cruiser. Alright guys, after a long road with this project, we finally get to the cool part, the manifold. Now the manifold is like the nerve center of your onboard air system. It's where all the hot air comes in and out through a series of interconnected tubes just like how I understand the internet works. With a manifold, you can add all sorts of bells and whistles like pressure switches, tanks, gauges, or even a four-wheel onboard air system. On that note, I want to give a quick shout out to Sponsored by Wifey over on Instagram and YouTube for giving me the inspiration for this project. I saw the manifold and functionality of his four tire air up system, and that got me thinking about how easy it would be to build a similar system on my own. Two months of trial and error and $600 worth of Amazon returns later and here we are. Easy. Alright, now my manifold is based on a Via Air 6 port quarter inch MPT manifold that you can get on Amazon from the links below. I chose this particular manifold because unlike most on the market, it comes with a mounting bracket. On top of that manifold, I added a digital pressure gauge to monitor the system and tire pressure, quick connect fittings for attaching the air hose, and a ball valve for bleeding off pressure. On the compressor side of the manifold, I have another valve which serves as the air inlet and compressor main shutoff. Next, I added a three-way T so I could move the pressure switch between the check valve and the inlet valve. Before I moved it downstream of the check valve, the compressor would cycle every 30 seconds or so due to the air leaking back out through the compressor. Super annoying. To relocate the pressure switch, I created a couple short jumper wires that extend the pressure switch leads that I created in the very first video I did on modifying the Smitty Belt. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Moving the pressure switch also allowed me to add a 125 PSI safety valve at the back of the compressor. If the pressure switch failed in the on position someday, I didn't want my compressor to essentially become an IED. All right, finally, after the pressure switch, I added a male quick disconnect. The compressor has a female quick disconnect at the end of the leader hose, and that allows me to easily disconnect the manifold. It also makes it possible to use the compressor without the manifold in a pinch, since the compressor has its own quick connect fitting. On the other end of the manifold is another port that I may use to add a tank or four tire air up system in the future. Now, the hardest part of adding the manifold for me was figuring out where to mount the thing and the clearances involved in tucking it under the hood. On the GX460, there's really only one place to mount the compressor and it's fairly far back in the engine compartment next to the master cylinder. I didn't want to have to lean in under the hood or onto a dirty fender because I have dainty sensibilities and I don't like to carry much laundry. That's why I decided to mount it to the battery J-hook. By mounting the manifold to the battery J-hook, I was able to move it as far forward as possible while also making it a bit easier to service in the field. I try to make everything field serviceable because like all men, I have fantasies of dragging my family out into the bush and then pulling them out of some calamity that I'll likely be the origin of. Hey girls, check out this cheap buddy heater I got. To mount the manifold to the J-hook, you'll need to mount it below the battery bracket for hood clearance. The factory J-hook doesn't have a ton of extra threads, so I first added another half inch of threads using a die set. I could have just bought a replacement J-hook for five bucks on Amazon, which have way more threads than the factory J-hook. However, I'm cheap and impatient, so I drove 10 miles to my father-in-law's house to borrow his die set and to hear once again how synthetic oil is far superior to conventional. I know, Scott. I already run synthetic. I also had to grind off just a bit of material on the top of the bracket to keep it from rubbing on the battery too much. I mounted the manifold between a couple of nuts. I know that there's a joke in there, but this is a family show, so shame on you. 
The exact configuration that I used from top to bottom actually went nut, small washer, large washer, manifold bracket, large washer, then two more nuts. The double nut will help it from coming loose and allows the nuts to be jammed up into the bottom of the battery bracket to keep it a little bit more stable on the trail. By choosing to mount the manifold at the front of the engine bay right under the hood, I had to go with a back mounted gauge to keep the height as low as possible. I went with the digital one because I like the visibility, but any back mounted gauge should work in this application. Before you mount the manifold, you'll need to remove the plastic front bulkhead cover. I wanted to keep the plastic on mine, so I ended up just trimming a little bit to accommodate the manifold. To mount the whole setup, I first connect the compressor hose to the manifold. I put the larger rear J-hook in place on the battery bracket, and then I hook in the front J-hook with the manifold attached and bolt it to the battery bracket. Finally, I connect the pressure switch to the longer compressor leads and it's ready to rock. Now, there are a lot of things to love about a setup like this. It's super clean, the components are in all the right places, and I think I've thought through the usability fairly well. It's also a great value at around 350 bucks for the entire system, compressor included. However, this isn't a totally bolt-on project as you'll need to modify a few parts like the compressor and manifold brackets, as well as cracking the compressor open to add the pressure switch leads. Thankfully, I think I've made most of the mistakes for you at this point, and there is a comprehensive parts list in the project description below. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I built out the poor man's Land Cruiser's onboard air system. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, share this video with all your camping and overlanding buddies. We'll see you out there.